Now I don't know if this is a good idea or not, but I'm thinking that maybe the safest place for these little rings is just leave them on the block until we actually need them. I could pull them pull them off and stick them into a, a test tube, but like I say, I think that the best place for them is uh, is on the block. However, these little uh, davits, I think they can they can go in the same test tube as the uh, davits for for the uh, hatches. Now they are a little bit sticky on the end because they, uh, they, they uh, they're picking up some of that tape. It, it could be that I left them I left them on there just a little bit too long. Uh, you probably can't see that, but there's a little bit of masking tape stuck on the base there. I hope that's not going to uh, hinder things when it comes to mounting them. Okay, so we got those. Put the lid on. I guess uh, we'll be uh, figuring that out in about, uh, oh, I'm guessing five, six months maybe. Maybe longer. Now as far as these other pieces go, um, I guess I could take them off now and put them into a tin. All right, that just leaves us with our life rafts that we've got to get the uh, liquid mask out of. And uh, I think what I'm going to do with the, with that is I'm going to use this uh, blue tack as as we did with this one. You can see the little hole still in the bottom. Uh, it seemed to hold it on pretty good, rather than trying to hold it in my fingers. Uh, at least that's the plan for right now. We'll just see what happens. Now the idea is when I take this green tape off, it also takes off this double-sided tape, which normally would be sticking on here real bad, and I wouldn't really get it off. Now the plan is, on this one, that we have to paint the deck tan. I'm going to use this uh, un unthinned but opened jar. Um, Shake it up really good here. Yeah, I think I'll have a, a little better luck uh, trying to brush on the unthinned version of this rather than the thinned. Uh, there'll be maybe less chance that it's going to creep up the sides if I accidentally touch the sides, which I'm, which I might. No, I'm not sure if I'm going to use this brush or not. It's kind of my favorite brush. Uh, might be a little bit just too heavy duty here for this. Uh, maybe this maybe the fine one would be better although usually I have pretty good luck with this brush I can I can sort of push paint up up to the to the edges if I'm really careful
Now my thinking here is if I can go all the way around the edges without climbing up the sides, then I can use something different to uh, a different brush to do the center. Might have to give it two coats here, I'm not sure. Ooh, I'm getting a little bit heavy there, aren't I? But maybe that's not a bad thing. Sorry, I'm kind of getting it out of your your line of vision there, but I have to keep it in my line of vision first. We're looking at it fairly close right now, even though we don't have the macro lens on. And um, most people will not actually be looking at it quite this close. I wonder if I should maybe rinse out my brush here. Yeah, I think I might have to give it two coats, and yet on the other hand, it might look okay if it has sort of a, <clears throat> excuse me, bit of a weathered look to it. A little bit heavy there. I did remember to press record, didn't I? Been so long ago I started this, I forgot. Well, maybe I could use this brush for filling in. Yeah, I don't need to use another brush. Make sure I get all the gray covered. Okay, now I'll just turn it around here for myself. Okay, can you still see it? Okay, I do believe I've got all of the uh, gray covered. Just uh, let me look, turn this around a bit now. I don't know if I should put another coat on or not. Oh, it looks a little bit like I could maybe use a tiny bit right here.
Well, let's let that dry. How about up in this corner here? Does it need any right here? Oh, maybe not. Okay, let's let that dry and see how it looks. Okay, quite a bit of time has passed here now. This is as dry as it's going to get. And uh, I'm thinking that uh, it's probably best if I do not try and put a second coat on. Now I know you can you can see the gray through, you know, sort of coming through here. It's a little bit translucent where it's thin. But on the other hand, when I'm looking at this at a bit of a distance, it, it sort of appears to be, um, it, it looks more natural if it was, you know, if it was all nice, smooth, completely covered over with a deck tan, it wouldn't look as weathered, you might say. Um, I mean, people do, uh, put, you know, do weathering to make it look like that. So let's just leave well enough alone here. Now, now there's another thing that I, I should mention here, and when I, when I'm working nice and close like this to the camera, I'm I'm aware of the fact that my breathing is sometimes picked up, when, you know, and, or even just swallowing. And if uh, if that sort of bothers people, I'm so, I'm sorry about that. I try to be mindful of the fact that, you know, I'm right in front of the microphone like this, and uh, when I'm you know trying to get in nice and close. Anyway, uh, so I hope it's not doesn't bother people. Yeah. I guess what I'm trying to say here is that when it comes to the ambient sound that you're hearing in the background, well, I don't mind if it's my fridge running in the kitchen, or maybe the clock ticking, or if I've got my windows open, you can hear the roar of the city. Uh, yeah, that's okay. What I don't want it to sound like is sound effects in a horror movie. <laughs> Okay, been getting a lot of comments uh, about these blades. Well, three or four anyway. And the gist of the comments is always sort of like, is, are these blades going to be as good as the X-Acto blade? Or, you know, yeah, the X-Acto blade. In other words, the, the real thing. And, uh, well, I, I probably would have to say probably not but how, how much better are these blades than these blades and I was thinking how can you test it out I mean you, what are you gonna do you're gonna take one of these blades and put it in one knife holder and then one of these blades and put it in another one and then keep cutting paper until finally one or the other probably this one uh, doesn't cut so good anymore uh, well, you, yeah, you could do that, but, uh, uh, you know, is the quality of the steel in this one as good as the quality of the steel of this one? And, and let's say, let's say that they're different. Let's say that, that, for instance, this one is very inferior. However, if it is sharpened as sharp as these are, at least for the first few cuts, you're not going to notice the difference. But then if the quality of the steel is less, and it, or, you know, maybe it's, it's, it's softer or something, it's going to wear down a little bit faster, even though it may have initially cut as good as these. Now, I can, I can test with my microscope to see what the sharpness looks like between the two, but, but how do I test for quality of steel? You know, there's, what, what do these guys call the, that uh, can test steel? Something like me, uh, a meteorologist has something to do with asteroids. Now, when I went to edit out that last scene, I laughed out loud when I heard myself. Yeah, well, you know, meteors, asteroids. <laughs> okay, I know that the meteorologist is the weatherman. I just wanted to let you know I'm not... That's stupid. <laughs> and a, uh, a a metalologist, I think it is, or something like that. Anyway, they, they know how to test steel to find out the quality of it. I don't know how to do that. 
but but I do have a machine that can wear these things down and if I can rig up an apparatus and use my uh, my my tarmac here uh, and, and I figured out a way I can do it uh, I can I think I can fairly and honestly wear the blades down and then measure the degree of wear and see you know is, is there a is there a noticeable difference uh, first of all, we'll test: Do they look as does, is the display look as sharp as this? Uh, then we'll test to see the 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 hardness of the steel. How how long do, how how well does it does this wear in compared to the Exacto? Uh, but you know that, and there's a lot of, lot of little things that you have to take into consideration. For instance, one one of these blades might be thinner. For instance than this and if it's thinner and I, I was that's why I got my micrometer out here I was going to measure to see if the thickness of the blade was the same because otherwise you you have to take that into consideration when you're when you're when you're calibrating your apparatus so that if this was a thinner blade you can't put near you you'd have to put the equal you'd have to put the same percentage of difference on, of weight when it's grinding if you know what I mean I, I think you probably know what I'm going to do um, anyway, um, just for the fun of it, let's let's just test and see if the thickness of these blades is the same as the Exacto. I guess I should really be getting any grease or anything off of that. I'll just use isopropyl 99%. That should that should do it. All right. Okay, 95%. <laughs> okay, now now where I'm going to measure it is is uh is not right here like where the 11 is. I'm going to measure it a little bit further down because if this thing is a little bit dish shaped it's going to, you know, if it's concaved on one side and convexed on the other it's going to have a... the uh, measurement is not going to be as accurate. Okay, but I do, I do believe we've got probably most of the grease off of that. But if I measure it to probably maybe a, a quarter of an inch from the tip, you know, like, like right about right there, um, I think we're going to get a fairly accurate reading of how thick this blade is. Um, yeah. Okay, so we've got our cheap knockoff blade, and we've got a genuine Exacto here. And I also wiped off the Exacto. This blade, you might remember, I can't remember about five episodes to go back. We we used it, and then I I put it back in the little box. Can't remember what was going on there, but. So this this blade is slightly used. When when I do go under the microscope to check for sharpness, I'll I'll take another one that has never been used. You know, I want to keep this as fair as absolutely possible. I, I don't I don't want to be able to say, see, the cheap ones are just as good or something like that. I mean, that's that's not right. So, oh, I've I've got the caliper set here uh, to uh, in, uh, inches. So we're doing it in ten thousandths of an inch. Okay, so it's it's zeroed. I don't know if you can see that. Everything is everything is zeroed. Back it off a bit here. And now this is our our genuine exacto. Try not to get my fingers in your way here. Okay. 
So it is 202.5 ten thousandths. Can you see that? Okay, 202. Maybe I'll just try and get a little bit different bite here, see if it changes. Now it is 201 ten thousandths. Um, yeah, <laughs> there's not a whole lot of difference, is there? Now this is our, our cheap knockoff. Well, it's almost the same. It's 200 ten thousandths. Let's take a little different bite. No, it still comes to 200 ten thousandths. So the difference in thickness is almost negligible. The uh, uh, X-Acto blade is uh, about two ten thousandths thicker. Um, and, and I would take that into consideration when I do my my, my other test, or when I rig up the apparatus. I, I've already figured out how to do it. But that's not going to be today. Okay, I'm going to write that down so I don't need to re remeasure that. Now, you do not have to be a weatherman to be able to figure this out. Just do the math and round everything off. The X-Acto blade is only 1% thicker than the cheap knockoff. Now, a moment ago, I was washing my, my hands off and my fingers off with hot soapy water, and the idea was to get the grease off my fingertips so that when I'm handling these little life rafts, I'm not going to be getting the uh, paint all greasy. And then uh, I was thinking, you know, I'll be sticking these ones these ones down onto the uh, blue tack and um, it'll, I think we'll be able to be able to manipulate them a lot better so that the camera can see them and I can see them at the same time. Come on, it shouldn't be that hard. They are so tiny. You know, they, they are just so tiny. Okay. I'll just push it down in there. Now I would think that I should be able to put a little bit of leverage on that uh, uh, liquid mask and uh, get it rolling out of there. Um, oh yeah, we were going to check and, and uh, see if this uh, blue tack left a residue. I kind of forgot about that. Well, let's... Uh, well, let's just take this off for the minute. Put it back here. Now, now this this slide is is uh, is pristine. There's there's no smudges or anything on it. You should be able to see there. Uh, so we'll take that and we'll just put it down on here. Okay. Now, if we take it off, what do we got now? I'm not seeing, uh, I'm not really seeing anything. Okay, well, that's good news. I thought that this uh, blue tack might give off some sort of, uh, you know, an oil residue. All right. Enough fooling around here. Let's get this pushed down on there. I think that's going to stay there. Okay, we'll put the macro lens on and uh, see what we can do here. Okay, I, I picked up my glass slide and I, and I looked at it and I can see a very slight outline of where the blue tack was on there. I'll look at it under the microscope and on my own time later. Um, yeah, okay. So it does have a very, very slight residue, but nothing I don't think to really worry about. You know what, I'm going to redo this because uh, when I'm using the macro lens, it is so easy to accidentally move everything out of the field of view of the lens and uh, as I mentioned before there's nothing worse than what watching somebody or listening to somebody talk about what they're doing and yet it is slightly being done off camera so okay so the center is there now I really don't need this much 
blue tack. I think we can probably get away with a little bit less here. But that, that's stuck on there pretty good. Yeah, I don't think I need a big blob of it like this. Boy, that's tough stuff. Okay, we got it. it actually, it's not so tough. I'm, I'm probably weak. Okay, now if we try and get this centered right on that hole, because that hole is what's going to be the center of rotation. Okay, I think that's probably pretty good. Whoops. We'll get it yet, don't worry. Okay, now. Do I want to push it down too hard? Does that look like it's staying centered? It does to me. Okay. All right, I think now we can put on the macro lens. Okay, now just have to be careful I don't bump the rotator. Alrighty, now my thinking is that this is the first one I've done, of the small ones that is. I'm thinking if I can just get it to start, then maybe I can use my finger and just sort of roll it out. No, it's not wanting to come there. I don't want to I don't want to scratch the paint. I think that once I get get a a glob of it rolled up sort of like a plasticine or something like that, or play-doh or whatever you call it where you live. Okay, here we go. Now it should work. No, I should be able to use the, the other one to... See, so I've got to hold this down here. Sorry, I'm going to have to rotate it here a bit, get a better angle. Yeah, there, got it. What an awful looking little thing. Okay, now I'm just wondering, is there any residue around the outside? I'm not seeing anything. I'm not seeing anything. It looks actually pretty good. Okay, now maybe we'll keep this here handy. And we'll take this off. Now if we put another one on in exactly the same place, it should also be centered, right? Now can I use this to help get the other one started? Will that actually work? No. Now, if there's going to be any scratches on that, uh, it's not really planking. I think on these things it was more like slats, just so that the, when you were walking on it with your boots, you didn't, uh, you know, hurt the bottom of the life raft. Okay, now maybe it'll come now. Come on. As long as I uh, work the stick in the direction of the uh, grain of the, <laughs> you know what I mean. This one's not going as good as the first one.
Yeah, the uh, the liquid mask seemed to get itself caught in the porousness of the paint. A little piece there, I should try and get that later. Now my thinking is that this bigger one will catch onto the little one. I'll pull it loose. Now somebody was saying that, at least I think somebody said, that you can also use blue tack to grab onto this. Try and get that out of there. I'm sort of damaging the plastic. Come on. There. Oh. It's so small I can hardly see it. Here we go. I better check my monitor. I might have bumped everything out of your field of view here. Okay, I think we got probably most of it here. I'll try and edit out the dead spots. Okay, let me check my monitor and see if that's still centered. Oh yeah. Alright, will this one go better? Well, it's starting out good. wonder if a person was to heat these up first, like with a... you know, like with the uh, hair dryer or something. But this this one's going good. All right, now maybe instead of coming to the end and working it up this way, how would it be if I turned it around and went back towards the middle? There's a little bit of a little bit of residue right there. Let's see if I can grab hold of it like this. Yeah, that seemed to work pretty good. Okay, is there anything else on the edges? What's what's all this going on here? Oh, that's paint. That's okay. I don't want to put it back. There. Alright. Maybe I don't need to poke it down as hard as I am. Oh, check the monitor. Oh yeah, we're still we're still centered. Now I know you don't want to watch all uh how many of these is there? Sixteen. Sixteen of these small ones. I don't have all day to watch this and I want to get a message from YouTube saying your videos are too long. I don't think there's a limit. In fact, um, I can I can actually set it up so that it would be live. I think YouTube has that that uh, feature that you can actually have live streaming, but I don't know if it's limited, you know, to a certain length. But I I wouldn't want to do anything live because. I'm under enough pressure here right now, just doing it at my leisure. So just, I think I got everything there. Yeah, that's just paint I'm looking at. Okay, we'll do one more.
Okay, here's one that has no pegs on the bottom. I think there's what four, four or five like that. And the rest all had pegs. I'm doing my best not to push down too much. I just have sort of a lateral scraping motion here. Okay. Is there anything on the sides anywhere? Maybe a little bit right there. Once again, you can see it a whole lot better than me. Probably people are making comments right now, you missed a spot. Yeah, I think I did too. Yeah, I thought there was some stuff. I'm not seeing it now. Okay. All right. I'll just uh, do the, the rest of them off camera. Well, we're going to have to see how it went in tomorrow's episode. Thanks for watching. And all being well, we will see you tomorrow.